Hey everybody, it is I, Embrace the Matrix, and you guessed it, you're going to have to listen to me ramble on for the next 29 or so minutes, if you choose. If not, hit the thumbs down, move on to the next whatever. So, how's everybody doing? It's been a little while since I've done one of these. I'm actually putting up two versions of this video. I'm putting up this voiceover version. I'm also putting a one with the music because it seemed like people are interested in both. So, why not? So, you have your choice. Or, better yet, check them both out. So, we're going to try to do this in one take. Hope you guys uh, enjoy. Sit back, relax. And let's talk about some stuff. How's that sound? Well... What's I'm sure you clicked on this because you saw the title of this painting, uh, cut uh, cut below the wrist. I thought it was a very tongue in cheek kind of way to um, express my initial feelings when I looked at this painting after it was done and created. And uh, that's you know from all the slice lines and things. I'm getting far ahead, but all the little lines and things made me think of of course suicide and uh you know ways of suicide and you get it you, i'm not gonna get it we're not gonna start this voiceover out like this you know me talking all bummed out well we'll get there we'll get bummed out later we got we got plenty of time to get bummed out so this started let's talk about the painting this started as a fluid painting and I knew I was going to do a border. I knew I was going to do slices. I just didn't know what I was going to do for the overall background, as you will see here in this video. So we were going to see how we obviously the highlighted color was green. Who doesn't love green? Come on now. So we were going to, you know, make this a primarily green um, paint background and not sure you know how we were gonna I, I initially thought well I'll just do you know nice fluid painting background that'd be kind of cool you know see if we get some cell action going I haven't really been using silicone with my cellular creation mainly because I don't have any so uh, yeah uh, I mix the paint up so much it just aerate it aerate aerates aerate aerates you know like they do with wine it aerates the paint so when I hit it with the torch it just pops all those bubbles that's you know and then you, then you get the cells getting created off that so you don't need fancy chemicals and stuff just mix the crap out of your paint because that's what I do I actually have little mini whisks they're little mini they're they're like the size of a sharpie but they're little whisks metal whisks that's what i use one day i'm gonna have to do like a studio video and show all little tools i use and stuff because a lot of times you don't see a lot of the stuff that i use because it's off camera or whatever i try not to bore you people with that kind of stuff although I'm the type that likes the behind the scenes stuff. I like buying, still buying movies because you get the bonus disc with the behind the scenes, uh, you know, how they made the movie and stuff. To me, that stuff's interesting just as well. So after we level this sucker off and you see my ring light, we're, we got rid of the ring light because obviously you see what it does. It just looks terrible uh, with paint. Even my softbox lights are going to go. We're going to come up with some new lighting. Because I don't like how it uh, inflects. Inflects? Is that a word? Does that make sense? I don't like how it looks. How about that? So, uh, we hit it with a little, little white sprinkle. You know why? Because, who cares? We can't. And then it was like... Let's just get our hands dirty because it was the, the the fluid painting. I didn't get any cellular activity. It just didn't look right, and I, so I figured I'd throw some white on and then just hand hand blend it in. As you can see, uh, I sped this up a little, just a little. 
I actually sped this whole video up. This whole process for this painting took a total of like three plus hours when I originally put all the videos together. So this one took a while. A um, little bit of time here, a little bit of time there, but for me, that's that's long. Some people are probably like three hours. That's nothing. You know, I spend months or weeks on a painting. I go, well, I, it took me weeks to get it done. It just, the total video time came out to about three hours, I think. So we shrunk it down to a half hour. Be happy. I'll, you know, you don't want to sit through the whole damn thing. Be thankful I speed these up. So this is just, this is random. This is what you're seeing right now is just off the cuff. You know, and then my kid did a little little boom shot right there. And you saw him walk in frame. Um, we try to keep him out of, you know, out of the way when the paint's flying. Because for one, I don't want him to get any ideas. Start throwing paint all over my house. And uh, two, I just don't want him to get get all painted up. So we're just tapping away. That's kind of my new thing. If you watch my other video, uh, another painting, I did some tapping. And that's just kind of my way of getting my hands in with the paint. I used to not wear gloves and, and mess around. And, and then I wrote about cad cadmiums and how it's toxic and all this stuff. And got me all scared. So now I just wear gloves because I, I, I just get too close to the paint. So we pulled out the uh, scraper and we saw what that did. Crap. And here we go. I call this my trash bag technique. If you get one of those shopping bags at the store, you know, and you go to like a giant eagle or a grocery store, I don't know, Piggly Wiggly, wherever you're at in the world. I don't know. Uh, save a lot. I don't know. I'm in northeastern Ohio. So we have giant eagle. That's what it's called. But anyways, you get your groceries in that plastic bag. Well, of course I save those things. So that's all this is, is just a crumpled up bag. And then, you know, when it gets a little gloppy, just spin it around. And man, I've done a lot of paintings with just a bag and some paint. And they come out really radical. As you can see, I just use this little like twist technique. So it gives like little mini hurricanes all over the, you know, just texture. Remember, this is just a background. We're not going for, you know, like crazy detail and stuff. This is just, we're just, we're just creating a background here. So we throw down some more white. We're going to break out you know, another bag, same bag, spin it around. I recommend people try this trash bag technique. You must, ref you must hashtag it trash bag technique or trash bag tech. That's better. Trash bag tech, T-E-K. And uh, yeah, that's what it is. And you could blend some nice paints and do it. I don't know. I'm certainly not breaking any new ground here, but that's just what I do. And I'll even hit it along the sides too, just to keep everything kind of uniform because I'm weird like that. Oh, here we hit it with the black. See, then what you do is, see what I'm doing? I got a bowl of paint, bowl of black, and start dipping it. Dip and twist. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Some of you know what I'm saying. Dip and twist. At least that's what we used to call it back in the day. We used to call it the old dip and twist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's been a while, people. I hope everybody's doing good out there. Uh, the Matrix has not been doing good. He's been doing very poorly. I, I really don't want to get too crazy personal in this video. I want to keep it more on the painting, but yeah, I hate, I, I, you know, I'd love to be honest and, you know, I could always bullshit you and just tell you, yeah, everything's been going great and whatever. No, that's not the case. Actually, there's just a lot of things. It just seems like, uh, every, every chance I get a little wisp of, uh, you know, the, the fog clearing, it, it's like, here, here comes, you know, Edgar Allan Poe the overtone and boom we're under back under a black cloud again so we went with so anyways moving onward segues gotta love them so we're moving on to the tape um so yeah uh we uh we left the um the background as it was with the black and the green and the white 
twisted it, and then we're taping it off. I'm taping it off because I'm going to put a border where that tape is, but I don't want to have to go over a whole bunch of ta uh, uh, paint and stuff. I'm going for uh, some symmetricalness, symmetry, symmetrically, uh, you know, whatever. I didn't break out the T-square, so we're just winging it with the, you know, dimensions and, you know, straight lines and things. The hell with all that precision. So, I did a huge painting with this technique, which is basically just slicing. With uh, I use uh, the palette knife. I use. I should have shown it, but it's like your traditional. You can if you pause it, you can see it. It's like your traditional Bob Ross style uh, palette knife. That one seems. To, I've tried other ones. That one just has the right angle. And the one that I have is old and crusty and nasty, but it it, it works every time. It's you know it, I clean it up, but it's just been beat down. But just dip it in the paint and slice away. You know a couple of the wrist. But uh, now let's not go there either. Come on, people. I don't want anybody. I already had a dime dropped on me once already. I don't need another one uh, for my suicide suicidal thought video i don't know if i told you guys that but from my suicidal thought suicidal intent video whatever i can't remember what I, my own video is yeah somebody called the uh, local mobile crisis and said i was gonna kill myself and all this stuff which was not the case at all i was just making an informative video and if you watched the video you would have seen that was the case but anyways Let's not get into that either. Because that's a little sore spot with the Matrix. But anyways, moving on to black. Slicing away as always. Please comment below and tell me what you think of this style. You know, doing things like this. I'd love to know. Palette knife, I mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little out of it. It's Friday afternoon. Got done with work early. Already uploaded the other video with the music. And I thought I would uh, sit down and throw this in. Throw this uh, voiceover in. And I'm not going to do any editing, so if you hear any noise or any anything, I really don't care. Uh, it's, um, this is just freestyling. That's all there is to it. And my monitor just froze. Again. This monitor keeps freezing. So now I'm forced to watch this on my laptop. That's okay. So we had this taped off, and then we, you know, I'm just slicing, uh, white, black, and then the green. I'm not using the same green, I'm using a different green, but nevertheless... We're going for, you know, dynamic uh, color expansion, something like that. Call it what you want, I don't care. So we're just slicing away. And then you saw I spun it around because, you know, we want to get it from all different angles. Because, see, obviously I want to pull the tape off and I want it to have a nice edge with all the slices. Because, remember, we're going to put a border on. Oh, here we go. This is the fun part. Pulling the tape off. This, for me, this is one of the most uh, anxiety-ridden and fun parts of doing all this because sometimes I get a little crazy and don't pay attention to where the tape crisscrosses and start ripping it, and then it's like hanging over the painting, and it's all wet paint. And you might be asking yourself, well, dude, why don't you wait till it dries? I've done that. Acrylic paint is ostensibly plastic. So when you let, when you do something like this and then you let it dry and you go to peel it up after it dries, it's a very good possibility and in most cases it will happen that it'll stretch or peel or pull it up, you know, so I don't want to risk it. I've had it happen in the past. So I do all this while the paint is still wet. So it gives me a nice clean line. I don't have to worry about, you know, it, it, it you know not giving me a nice clean line this is really why i'm doing it 
So we're going to peel it off ever so gently and try not to have it touch the painting or anything because I've done that before. And as abstract as we're, we're going to be, you know, I do have a plan somewhat. And I hate when that happens. <laughs> like right here, I'm having trouble getting this tape off with my finger. Probably just cut my nails or something. So, got it. And I don't want to get too crazy picking at it, you know, and mess up my lines. So, I, I went for the uh, X-Acto blade. And I'm like, come on, come on. Just get the little edge. Just get the edge. Just a little bit. Oh, we got it. Boom. Boom, we got it. So being oh so gentle to remove the tape from this beautiful non-intellectual abstract art creation we'll spin it around to make it easier on ourselves I'm still here I didn't go anywhere bet you thought I left nope just being quiet uh, it's fun. It's exciting and it's scary because you don't want to mess it up. Especially, like I said, because you're doing it when it's still wet. So then we let this dry at this point. Oh, well, we clean up our mess, obviously. Come on. You know, I'm the clean paint. I'm the clean artist. I know it doesn't look like that from my table, but I am. So then, now... We have to pretty much do the reverse, and I certainly sped this up a little bit because uh, it takes a while. And we're, what we're doing is, again, I'm not using any. Uh, I'm not using any. Uh, well, I did get no. Oh, I'm sorry, I did get the T square out. So, nope. I lied. I had to for this part because when you make these cuts it's and i got a brand new exacto blade i've gotten it down to where i can make the cuts because at this point i want it to be accurate i want it to have nice tight corners it, you know it's it's controlled chaos i mean it really is it's just you know it's it's, it's precise chaos because it's like well this looks like he's like doing something crazy it's just this is my, uh, you know, my anal retentiveness coming through where I just want it to be perfect and come out like I want. But that's the funny thing. These are abstract art paintings. I mean, come on, let's, let's be realistic. You know, happy accidents are very much a factor when it comes to this kind of uh, creations. But the masking part is pretty well... Uh, done pretty precisely I just heard a noise alright that freaked me out anyways so then we're just we're just putting some tape on the inside moving it up just so when we go to create our border uh, we don't uh, you know make a mess on our already awesome created background, foreground, side ground, all that stuff. So we clean clean that, you know, make sure. And here we go. Simple, easy. You wonder how I do it? Texture, baby. This is how you get texture. Push down, lift off. Push down, lift off. That's And just get lots of paint on your brush and go to town. But, you know, try to keep it even. Try to keep it... I don't know why I'm telling you any... I'm not... This is not supposed to be a, a, you know, a demo. Well, I guess it is. But I don't expect you to go out and try to do anything like this. I'm just explaining what I'm doing because why not? But yeah, that's all you have to do. Or at least that's all I do because I like to pull the paint off the canvas. I like to try to get it to come off. And I encourage people, like, I know a lot of people are like, don't touch my paintings, don't do this. I, I actually encourage people when I'm at shows and displaying my stuff. I was just at a craft show and I actually sold, uh, I sold over $400 in paintings at a craft show, art and craft show. 
and I was the, really the only painter. There was like a couple other people doing something and then had a couple paintings, but I had nothing but old paintings and I sold a little over four, oh, a little over $400 worth. And my table was a hundred bucks. So we have $300 and I'd like to say profit, but really it's not because I've certainly spent way more in materials for that group of stuff but nevertheless it was good i made a network with some other artists and stuff and other people that did other kind of things so it's pretty cool nevertheless but this is how we create the background and then we mix it up and guess what's back trash bag why not talk about radical texture unprovoked unpredictable well, it is provoked, but unpredictable, radical texture. Get you a trash bag and a canvas. Go have fun. That's all there is to it. Just go have fun. Don't forget to do the sides, though, or it's not going to look stupid. <laughs> uh that's what I'm doing there right now. I'm twisting on the sides. Remember, dip, what, we, what we call it? Dip and twist? Something like that. What we used to call it back in the day. Twist and shake. Something. I'm drinking water from a bottle. Mmm. Nothing better than water from a bottle. As long as it's not from the tap, because that's what contains all the fluoride. Okay, here we go. Now we got to pull the damn tape off the inside. This is where it gets hairy. Let's, let's all be quiet. Shh, 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 shh. Let's watch. Being careful. Shh. Quiet down out there. I can hear you guys. This is we we need we need complete silence. So there's no mistakes. Quiet your dog, man. Tell that dog to shut up. Tell him you're watching a Matrix video. Alright, and up with the kids too. Put them listen. Tell him to go in the other room. This is important. All right, here. See, here's where it gets. Oh, oh, look. Oh. Three second rule. Did you see what happened there? Go back and look. The tape touched the paint. God dang it. I'm telling you, you got to be careful. Now, see, when I do this. Because I, I glob on so much paint, what happens is it creates a, a much higher, you know, uh, level. So there's a very distinct borderline here. We're going to fix that in a second with my patented, not so patented, never copied, never trademarked. Uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call this. Um, I thought I had a name for it, but I can't remember at the moment. But anyways, this is latex soft body. It's not hard body. This is soft body paint. It comes in these little jars like this. And this is where we're going to connect the border with the border and the painting. And I don't know. I'm sure somebody else has done this sometime, somewhere. But I've never seen it done this quite like this where you do you put a lot of border you know I, I mask off the inside and it just gives it that whole dimensional look when you look at it when it's done it, it really I think has a really it just the way the the border you know the the one inch border looks now here we go Use, I used to do this with an exacto blade But now I do it with whatever I can get my hands on. In this case, it's just a skewer. It's a wooden skewer. And I literally just flick back and forth. 
flick, 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 and just flick the paint. Now, what's really cool, and I've done this, is if you, I just wanted to do one color for this one, but I've done two color where you do two beads. You know, you do one bead of, let's say, black and then a bead of white. And when you do that and then you flick it, they blend together and it looks radical. It just looks so cool. So I don't know. This was my way I came up with to like bridge those two from that border to the actual painting. And I think it gives it a real cool look. There's actually a girl. I think it was a girl. I'm pretty sure that tried doing this. And uh, I, I think I uh, shared it on Instagram. But, you know, it's a really cool technique. I, you know, I, I thought her attempt was really good. It's, it's, you know, it took me a while to get it quite right where I'm doing it on the first take. Because really, at this point, there's, if, you, if you mess it up, you're going to have to, like, have really a whole lot to clean up. Because the everything's dry except for the black that I'm putting on. So the other border's dry. I'm not trying to blend those colors. We're just putting this nice little black overtone on it and make it look radical. Right? Sometimes you got to wipe off your, your tool. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time I heard that you have to wipe off your tool um, I'd have 10 cents uh, but anyways that's how it's done and if I'm telling you right now if you're still with me in this voiceover where I'm like it's Friday afternoon and I'm beat tired had a hell of a week on the job and sitting here talking about this painting God bless you, or whatever, whatever you be, whatever you believe in, bless you. And now come the pictures. You know the you know the routine by now. If you've watched the Matrix videos, we hit you with the video, and then we hit you with the close-ups. We want you to show, look at that. Look at that swirl. That almost looks like ice cream. Like you could eat it, but I wouldn't eat it. So I hope you guys have been doing good. I appreciate all the support. Sometimes I do these as sort of like an update, kind of talk about the painting, talk about what's been going on. This one, I certainly talked more about the painting. Uh, and, you know, I'm actually going to do an update video of what else has been going on. And that might provide some more details and talk a little more about things, but... Yeah, this ride is not over by any stretch of the imagination. So the the Matrix is going to pull through as he always does, as he always will, through the thick and the thin and the bullshit and whatever else. And that's, see, see those little dots, those little white specks? That part I didn't get on film is when I had it masked off. I have bottles of, uh, like, uh, a shimmery like pearlescent white color that I can spray and I kind of hit it a couple times just to throw a little like uh, little stars or something in there you know just little little white dots but that's that's pretty much how it ended up some close-ups of the I don't even know what to call it I don't know what to call that kind of like zigzag border thing I don't know it's a board it's like the border on the border you know what I mean? Like, ugh. We're coming to the end of this video, and you're probably thanking yourself that. Please thumbs up this video. Please subscribe. I know it's a long one, but I got lots of other ones that are short. Please show everybody. Let your grandma know, your mom, your dads. There you go. It's available for purchase right now. If you're interested, please contact me. It's a beautiful painting. It's an amazing dynamic depthation creation. Uh, and I just think it turned out really radical and really cool. How many times did I say radical in this in this video? Probably too damn many. I love all the support and I appreciate everybody.